It's dark. Somewhere outside your window, you hear the familiar sound of a siren echo through the night. The faint red glow of the numbers on your alarm clock read 159. They tick over to two. Another minute gone, wasted. You could have been asleep. Why weren't you asleep? You've got class in six hours. You hear that familiar voice call out to you. Another minute gone. Another moment wasted, just like the majority of your life. I'm trying, you shout back. If only you would just shut up, I could sleep. What's the point? You'll be too tired to do any good now. May as well just stay in bed, try again another day. You've wasted your life anyway. (laughs) What are you even doing here? I don't know. I don't know, you sob. Maybe you should just give up. What's the point? The voice echoes. Your voice in the back of your mind. The clock ticks again. 201. For some of you here today, this situation may seem all too familiar to you. For others, perhaps what will follow will open your eyes to the reality of someone around you. A sleepless night can be all too familiar reality for those of us who suffer from depression, anxiety, and other major mental health disorders that affect the population. The constant internal battle with that nagging voice in the back of your head seems like a war for which there will be no end. The struggle for control of your thoughts and actions with an opponent so equally matched as yourself can seem hopeless. According to the Canadian Mental Health Association, more than 50% of the population will have or has had a mental illness by the age of 40. Anxiety disorders affect 5% of the population, causing mild to severe impairment in daily functioning. And suicide accounts for 24% of deaths between 15 to 24-year-olds and 16% between 25 to 44-year-olds. That's you. Tick. It's 202. Whether you like it or not, we find ourselves in an age of unprecedented mental illness, living in a year of extreme loneliness, a condition which, left unattended, can lead to severe health issues, ultimately resulting in an untimely death for you, or that friend you lost touch with, or the classmate or coworker you never had the time to get to know, the one who sat by themselves in the back of the class or ate their lunch alone. If you're like me, you've probably heard it before. You've reached out to someone, tried to express that you're unhappy and don't know what to do with it, and they've come back miraculously with a solution. Well, if you want to be happy, you can't rely on others. You've got to be happy with yourself first. Thanks. I'd honestly never thought of trying to be happy. Magic. 203. Ladies and gentlemen, this may come as a shock to you, but sometimes the best thing you can do is acknowledge the way someone is feeling and learn to listen. Too often do we seek to provide solutions instead of providing support in a time of crisis, and too often do we miss the opportunity to understand. In this world of ever-increasing mental illness, it is important for us to understand how to help. How to help others who come to us how to help ourselves with healthy boundaries, and how to create a culture of support and understanding. Another person's problems may seem insignificant to you when they can only manage an I can't sleep or I just feel so tired. But to them, finding the strength to say those few words is akin to climbing Everest. Be there for them. Ask the deeper questions. Seek to further understand what they are going through, and once you've done this, know that it is not your role to provide a solution. Help them get connected with the professionals who can, and let them know you're there to listen should they ever need it. You may not be the destination at the end of their journey, but you can be the turning point that sets them in the right direction. There is a stigma surrounding mental health. A perceived mark of disgrace associated with a particular circumstance, quality, or person. It is this stigma that fills a person with fear of reaching out, a fear of seeking help, 
that those who do not carry it may otherwise brush off as insignificant, trivial, easy. When you look at our history in terms of how we've treated those with known mental health disorders, you'll find a dark past of imprisonment, medical experimentation, and archaic, less than human, treatment of individuals who suffered, afraid, abandoned, alone, when they only wanted help. It's no wonder people suffer in silence when faced with the alternative being your own worst enemy has traditionally been the lesser of two evils. Just because we no longer routinely commit people to asylums doesn't mean we've solved the problem of stigmatization. People living with mental illness can be viewed as frustrating, difficult to interact with, lazy, awkward, weird, annoying, depressing, and the list goes on of unattractive qualities that leave these individuals ostracized and without social support. Left to deal with their issues on their own, ill-equipped, without the knowledge or tools to succeed, paralyzed by fear and hopelessness, unable to act. You can be the difference. While there may be some truth to the qualities above, they do not make a person any less than human. If you were suffering in the same way, and don't kid yourself, judging by the statistics, that day may very well come for you. You'd want to be loved and supported all the same. Set healthy boundaries to protect yourself. Talk them over with the person seeking your help. Work to have a clear understanding of what you need from each other. You may just be the difference between a sleepless night and a morning that never comes for that person. According to the World Health Organization, one person dies from suicide every 40 seconds. Tick, it's 206. You do the math, sleep on it. Nine others will never get the chance.